This birch tree seeded itself into the flower bed about a year ago. And it's now time to dig it out and start it on its journey to become a bonsai tree. Keep watching, see how you too could develop great bonsai for free. Birch trees with their iconic white bark are pioneering species thanks to their small seeds housed in catkins which are dispersed by the wind. This adaption allows them to quickly establish in new areas. This tree self-seeded in this flower bed. I need to dig this out before it becomes too established. The aim is to cut around the tree and sever any lateral growing roots just below the surface and then to lift this out and reduce any downward growing or tap roots so that I can eventually fit this into a more shallow pot or basket. To complicate things I'm trying to avoid causing too much damage to a Japanese maple that's growing just behind it. So here is our tree, and I don't mind telling you that was much more of a wrestling match than I'd anticipated. I didn't collect quite as much of the root. I perhaps expected to collect a wider root ball than I did. Uh, it was a bit tricky because this tree was growing next to a Japanese maple, so I had to be careful not to damage that one too much. But as you can see, it's come out. There is some root on there. I'm going to just tidy up some of these big, thick growing some of these big thick roots which are growing downwards and then I'm going to secure that into this perforated basket with some bonsai soil. So for purely practical reasons and to get this growing in a shallower basket I need to reduce some of this particularly downward growth in the roots and take that root off. Perhaps even a little higher up. And I'm now going to secure this into this perforated basket in some soil. Try and arrange those roots so that it'll start growing more radially going forward. Uh, I'm less concerned about the state of the roots now in terms of where they're growing. What's more important is the health of the tree and making sure that this survives now with this reduced root mass. So let's get it secured in the pot and get some soil in there. And then just getting some tie wires into the basket which will hold the tree in place and keep that steady whilst the roots are recovering. I'm a big fan of these perforated baskets because they provide a lot of aeration and drainage to the roots. I found that particularly when I'm developing Japanese maples, they benefit greatly from being in one of these baskets. The fact that it's quite wide as well means that the roots develop more laterally, 
which is exactly what we want in order to get the tree into a more shallow basket in the future. I now need to get some soil in there to get the tree in. So I'm just mounding up in the middle. And because this is a newly collected tree, it's not a refined tree. This is just going into some molar clay, kitty friend, pink molar clay soil. I'm just going to try and arrange that as best I can. And I might need to just reduce the roots again a little. Just to get that to sit low in the basket. So I think that's where the tree is going to sit. So I'm going to now just secure those wires and try and hold it in place, keep it steady in the pot. So I'm just pulling on the wire and twisting. So the wires coming out from this side of the pot round the tree and to this side and onto the shoulder of the root there, just pulling that down. And same on the other side. So the wires coming out from this side across. And there's a convenient big root here that I can use to brace the wire over. So I'm going to pull on the wire, create some tension in there, and twist at the same time until that becomes taut and holds the tree in the pot. I'll just snip off the excess. And that should do the job of holding that steady in there. So I can now fill the basket and make sure those roots are covered. And this is a great example of a piece of bonsai material which I got for free. It quite literally was just seeded naturally into that flower bed in the front garden and if I'd left it there it would have become a problem uh, perhaps interfering with the foundations of the building. Oh, there we go. And so there we have it, our birch tree collected from the front garden, potted up into a pot. We're now going to develop those roots and let those grow. But I've also got other plans for this tree. I wouldn't normally recommend performing more than one major operation on a bonsai tree in any one season. So you'd normally either work the roots or do significant trimming. However, this tree was a free tree collected out of the garden it's cost me nothing and, and therefore i'm willing to be a bit more risky with it and be a bit more dramatic and so i'm actually planning to do a severe trunk chop on this tree about here and in the past i've had quite good success with doing severe trunk chops particularly on birches and the horn beams. And what I'm hoping is going to happen is that all of the energy which is stored in this lower portion of the trunk is going to surge up the tree. And at the cut point, it's going to start forming buds and therefore create a new canopy on the tree. It's a bit of a Hail Mary cut. I'm taking a little bit of a risk, but it's an experiment. And also it was a free tree. So there isn't really a great deal of risk involved there. So let's get to it. And there you go. In fact, I'm also wondering if perhaps I could go quite a bit lower than that. So indeed, let's do that. I found that it can be quite beneficial to cut at a diagonal as well. So that's what we've got. A diagonal cut on the tree there. Now, some people might worry about pathogens and about that becoming wet or bleeding too much. This time of year, I'm not really concerned. Again, it's a free tree. So let's see what happens. Uh, what I'm hoping is to get branches and buds forming around the cut site. And eventually we'll develop a new canopy on what is now effectively just the stump of a tree. Some people might have suggested that perhaps I should have air laid that. Who's got time for that? And I've got some other trees in the garden that I'm intending to do that with anyway. Performing a severe trunk chop on a young birch sapling can have profound effects on its growth and development. 
by removing the upper trunk just six inches above the roots and leaving no upper branches while the tree is dormant. It prompts the tree to redirect its stored energy towards forming new buds and branches. This dramatic pruning technique stimulates the birch sapling to undergo a vigorous response as it taps into its reserves to initiate new growth from dormant buds along the trunk. This is exactly what foresters do when pollarding trees. The results of this severe trunk chop is a rejuvenated birch sapling with a more compact and potentially thicker trunk as new branches emerge from the cut site and the lower portion of the tree. I've had success with this dramatic approach at this time of year with birch and hornbeam trees. It's worth pointing out that not every species of tree will form advantageous buds when performing such a severe trunk chop, so it's worth checking out the details for your particular tree. Now I'm not quite finished with this tree. You may have heard of the black bag technique, and if not, that's a method whereby you cover the tree, particularly sick or unwell trees, in a black bag. And what that does is it does two things. It increases the moisture and the humidity around the tree and that also promotes hormonal changes within the tree, which causes it to put out buds. So what I'm planning on doing is covering this tree with a black bag. And I'm going to check the tree in perhaps a month's time and see how that is getting on. And what I'm hoping to see is lots of buds beginning to develop on that tree. If I had a greenhouse, I would pop this now into a greenhouse. Unfortunately, I don't. So what I'm going to do is just put it into a quiet corner of the garden where it won't be disturbed and leave it for a month, six weeks, and come back and see how that's doing. And when I do that, I will show you exactly how the tree's getting on. This is my first time using this technique, so it's something of an experiment for me. But let's see how we get on. And if you'd like to see how this tree develops and progresses, then please hit the subscribe button. And if you've practiced the black bag method before, this is a bit of a, a new trick for me. So if you've experienced this before, then please leave your thoughts in the comments below.